Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about bits, snaffles, curbs. Um, I'll also talk to you a little bit about hackamores. Um, this is going to be like a real quick <laughs> A to Z and <in> like <laughs> as fast as possible. So anyways, first things first. Snaffle, shank bit. Snaffle, shank bit. Okay, what makes it a snaffle or a shank has nothing to do with the mouth whatsoever. This is a nice one-to-one -one ratio. So in other words, if you pull with one pound of pressure on these rings, the horse is gonna feel one pound of pressure. Okay, there's no lever action. On the curb, if you know anything about lever principle or some different engineering stuff, because it connects up here, and then you have this shank down here, when you pull here, if you would measure the amount of pressure up here, so if this is like three times the length of that, you're gonna get like three times the amount of pressure. Now it's a little bit different because where the mouth is, is like in the center of all of that torque, um, but it's still the same principle. Plus you also, as you turn here, I'm pulling off the rack here, as you, it pulls on your curb okay, or, uh, strap. So when you pull on that curb strap, that's gonna tighten on their chin, right? So their jaw, so the bar, um, the mouthpiece comes down onto their bars and then the curb strap is going to, or curb chain is going to tighten up on their chin. So they are way more harsh than your hands. Um, that doesn't mean it's bad. Harsh doesn't necessarily mean bad. Um, cause you might be using the lighter touch. So you have to have good enough hands to like cut down the amount of pressure down like one third what you would use with a snaffle, you know, would be acceptable with a curb. Um, if you have a green horse, you want to be able to haul back sometimes. Sometimes you need to, right? Speaking louder to a horse that doesn't understand what you want does not make the message any more clear. So a snaffle is really clear, especially when it comes to bending, steering, turning, because when you pull here, it just turns your head sideways and that's it. When you have a curb, it comes this way. So if you just pull one rein, it oftentimes does not actually make the head come sideways, especially if you have a tom thumb, which I'll get into here in a minute. If you pull on just one side of a curb, right? So you're pulling down here, it oftentimes pulls the head this way, right? So a lot of times you get horses that are put into shank bits too early and they do a lot of twisting their head instead of actually turning. So when we're looking for bend in the horse, we want their pole joint to bend. So in other words, we want them to like tuck their jowl into their neck without doing this head twisty thing. Um, so if you see a horse that swings their neck around like a gate on a hinge, you know, like from the wither, that's not bending. That's just swinging. A gate doesn't bend. It just swings at the hinge. If the neck is working like that, your bend is not correct. So you really need to get the bend in a snaffle before you're ever ready for a curb. Now in dressage, at higher levels, we actually use both at the same time. I keep knocking all my rings down. <laughs> I'll have to fix this whole wall when I'm done with this video. Okay, so um, the two bits at the same time. So you can see there's the snaffle bit back here and then we have the curb. So you would ride that with two sets of reins and the idea is that you have the one bit for bending and the other bit to get flexion this way. So the curb is very good at, at bringing a horse this direction, whereas the snaffle is very good at bending side to side. Now, if you say, I have a horse that doesn't stop, well, guess what? If you stop the left side, the right side of the horse is gonna stop too. So if you have a horse that's that hard to stop, you don't wanna be using two reins anyway. Two reins can get you into trouble. Two reins is like, corking the tea kettle while the flame is still on, okay? Whereas if you bend, which you can do in a snaffle a lot better, then you're stretching one half of the horse and you're stopping the other half. That way you're not making explosive behavior. So now hackamores. If you follow like a vaquero tradition, oftentimes they start in a snaffle and then they would go to a bosal, okay? So if you see, um, if you're talking to a vaquero, this is what they mean by hackamore, okay? Uh, they are not referring to... Okay, somebody actually came to a clinic and had this, and we had her change it, and the horse was fabulous after we changed it. This is a big, nasty, mechanical hackamore. Okay, so the gal who was using this, she thought it was softer because it's not a bit. Well, guess what? That big shank there has a lot of leverage. 
I mean, if you had a nose piece that was size small enough to fit an arm into, you could break someone's arm with that thing. I mean, it cranks with lever action. Uh, so, yeah, not a fan of the mechanical hackamores, especially that type. They make some that have just a little, little tiny bit of turn. Those aren't too bad. Um, some horses do okay in them, but uh, it's usually because they already have some severe mouth issues or just maybe a really, really weirdly conformed mouth. Um, so if I have a horse that has a weirdly conformed mouth, two of the bits that, I, oh, I guess I should say, first of all, sorry, I'm trying to rush through this. This video isn't like 20 minutes. Um, my go-to mouthpieces and are either, oh, we're down here. Either, this is called a Mylar Comfort Snaffle. Um, and it's got like this barrel port in the center. What I like about these is they don't close the whole way. Like that's as closed as it gets. It won't fold down more than that. So a single jointed snaffle, okay, like this guy, when that folds down the whole way, that can hit the horse in the roof of the mouth or it can turn down and hit them in the tongue. So um, either way, this bit does not collapse that far. Um, another option, um, and these are usually a little cheaper sometimes, is a French link. So this link in the center, even though this folds down, um, it's not the same, like you don't have that point sticking out that's gonna poke them in one space or the other. This does have usually a little bit more tongue pressure. So if you have a horse that doesn't really love tongue pressure, this Mylar Comfort Snaffle is a really great go-to. Um, I've seen some other weird mouth things, like I've seen two different horses now that had really stretchy gums. Like the skin on their gums was really weirdly stretchy. And so the snaffle would push that gum material up into the first molar. Both horses hate a snaffle, go figure. Um, so anyways, don't cringe, it's not as bad as it looks. We rode both those horses in this Mi'kmaq. So this Mi'kmaq does have a shank, so it does turn, but you see it's got a really short shank. So if you look at the distance between the top and the bottom there, it's like two inches on the top and maybe two and a half inches on the bottom. So it's not a lot. That big old mouthpiece, um, the way it's shaped, it lays flat uh, on the horse's gum. So it actually creates a good bit of surface area. Now the one thing about these bits is you need to have a chin strap. I don't know if you can see it on there. Um, and it needs to be tight. So that chin strap keeps that bit from turning the whole way over in the horse's mouth. So when you pull, on that curb, if you just, if you didn't have a chin strap, it would turn the whole way over. And then that top piece um, would fold down to the horse's tongue. That would be bad. Um, so you actually need a tight chin strap. Uh, if a horse isn't horrible in a snaffle or you really need to use a snaffle, like let's say you wanna do dressage where you're required to use a snaffle or the rider's hands can't handle something like that Mi'kmaq, two of the options. This one is called a turtle top from NS Bits. And the beauty of that is just the way it's cut, it sits higher in the horse's mouth. So it's up or the tongue's not quite as sensitive. And the other thing I've found is just this little plastic nave bit. Um, I have one horse that hates snaffles and I can't figure out why. Like, I don't see anything in his mouth that tells me why he hates them, he just does. Um, but out of all the snaffles, he goes the best in that one. So if I have kids or students riding them. Um, I don't really want them necessarily using a curb bit on them if they're not ready for it. So we'll use that little plastic nave bit. Um, let's see, oh, so I talked earlier about the Tom Thumb just a little bit, I know I'm jumping around. This is a version of a Tom Thumb. Um, it's not the worst one I've ever seen, but I'm not a fan of any of them. So what's bad about these, and it's hard to show you while I'm holding the phone, but as you pull back, on the on one shank it twists the bit this direction right so it gets that head pop um, if you're going to use a curb what you really want to use is a straight bar this is all one piece right um, the other option is this one right here it looks like a tom thumb but it's not because this mouthpiece is the same mouthpiece as the mylar comfort snaffle and what happens is this rotates independent. So I can rotate one side and the other side does not rotate. So if one of these sides rotates back the whole way, it almost turns into a snaffle, right? Once it rotates the whole way back. Now it has a curb strap and the curb strap keeps it from entirely doing that. 
but at least that curb has a little bit of independent side action. Um, so if most hybrids between snapples and curbs are a bad idea, but that one's actually not too bad. So if you're gonna get some kind of hybrid, make sure it has this type of barrel port so that each side works independent. Um, it can also maybe have like a loose ring connection out here that will also give it an independent action. Uh, that makes it a little bit better. Um, Vaqueros would go from their Snaffle to their Hackamore to what they call a two rein, which is very similar to the concept of a dressage double bridle. Um, I don't have one set up here, but that would be a a uh, small hackamore underneath. So we actually do have one hanging up here. Um, this one right here, we just don't have the whole. So it's a little bit thinner. The bosal is thinner than uh, this bosal, right? So it's thinner and then they would hang a finished bridle spade bit on the horse's mouth. And the idea is that when they first start riding with that, they're gonna use all hackamore and the spade bit just hangs out. And eventually they start using the spade bit a little more, a little more, a little more until the horse really understands. Here's the problem with the spade bit, is if the horse does not understand it, you cannot grab a hold of them. They are incredibly sharp. So the idea of a spade bit is that a cowboy who has 60 feet of lariat coils in his left hand along with his reins, he can only move his left hand a couple inches. That's it. His rein hand can only move an inch or two. So, cause he's got 60 foot of coils in that hand while he's roping. So he needs a bit that can transmit a feel when he only moves his hands two inches every time. Problem is you cannot haul back on one of these. Now this is a, this is just a wall hanger. Um, it's the right mouthpiece, but it's not balanced right. Like that mouth should be angled back a little bit. Um, so this one doesn't actually fit a horse's mouth properly, but it still looks cool, so we have it. Um, <laughs> it's also good for these little demos. Um, so anyways, yeah, um, those bits, when people say they're harsh, um, I kind of prefer to say that they're sharp. And they are sharp. They're very, very sharp. But at the same time, if you're only moving your hand an inch, it makes sense. But here's the thing. The horse has to know the answer. So if your horse tosses their head, the last thing on the planet that you want to do is get a harsher bit. So if your horse is tossing their head and somebody says, put a martingale on him, put a tie down on him, don't listen to those people. Go back to a simple snaffle, right? A well-made one. So like this is a turtle top or down here we have the Mylar Comfort Snaffle. Start with those. If you don't know what to use, start with a French Link or Mylar Comfort Snaffle, something like that, okay? That is always your best go-to that is usually much more mild than most hackamore options. It's also more clear. What you need with the green horse is clear communication, right? You don't need stronger, you need more obvious, more that they can understand it. You have to do ABCs, right? Before you can do like college level writing exams, okay? That's like, actually that's higher than that yet because that's like master level stuff. So use the right tack at the right time. Um, it's not that some tack is wrong. Okay, I, you know what? A tom thumb is always wrong. I don't like them ever. <laughs> but, um, you know, tack as far as like a double bridle or a bosal or even at full spade bit, if the horse is properly prepared and if the rider has great hands, that's an awesome piece of equipment. But if you and your horse are kind of green. If either one is green, then you absolutely should be sticking with a basic snaffle, right? Until you're both ready to move up to something more advanced. Um, if you think the problem is the bit, the problem is probably your hands. Or in some cases, it's gonna be the horse's mouth. Make sure your horse's teeth are floated. Check to see if there's some weird issues in there and um, start with a basic snaffle and go from there. All right, thanks, see you guys.